All right. So I want you to take your creature and have it fill or take up, really activate a, at least 25% of your scene. So the way you can think about that is if you cut your scene in quarters, and we can use guides to find the half points, right? Your creature should take up at least one of those quarters anywhere in your scene. So mine takes up more than that, for sure. Mine takes up more like a third of the overall composition. So we're good there. I'm pretty secure with my placement. That doesn't mean that I have to perfectly be okay with the pose of my creature. I'm going to be showing you how to change its pose. And it's really ideal if you can find a way for your creature to interact physically with the environment of your landscape. So if I were to have my creature be small and in the foreground, I would have him interact with, with this little ice flow. Here I'm going to have him interact with this water tower. And to show that, I'm going to have to change some things right at the point of contact, right? So if my creature is standing on the ground, I'm going to have to have that ground be impacted by my creature, not just by a shadow, but by dust and dirt actually overlapping my creature's feet. Here I want the, the talons to kind of grab and splinter the wood. So I'll change the pose a little bit. But before I do all of that, I just want to make sure the color works. So I go to Image Adjustments. These are direct adjustments to my combined character layer. They're going to do everything except the talons, right? And I'm going to say um, First Levels. And I'll play with the Midtone slider and see if I think the creature needs to be brighter in the midtones or darker, or if it was just right. Maybe just a touch lighter. And it's nice to kind of see it uh, small as well, the big picture. And then I want to look at the color balance. And I'm going to start with midtones and maybe push it a little bit more into the cyan and blue. That's working pretty well. Then I can play with the subtleties, like the highlights. Maybe they're a little too um, too yellow to knock those back. Because you just have to think, what would these local colors, the red of the wings, the orange of the the features on the head, what would those look like under the lighting conditions of my landscape? So that's the temperature of the color. Say OK. Now notice that that affects my feet, but that's actually kind of nice because as the feet come in, they warm up a little bit and they match the mid, mid tone mid-ground tones of the water tower. So I'm going to blend that in with a soft eraser at 100% opacity, but very soft to get rid of that hard edge. Right. Okay, so I've done levels, I've done color balance. Now I have to start thinking about lighting. And one thing that I would recommend you play with is amping up your texture overlay. So if I duplicate the texture overlay I have on top of everything, and then if I actually flip it, and then duplicate it again, and then maybe even just make it normal, <laughs> and, and filter it and blur it with Gaussian Blur to soften it even more, Then I can even just take a big chunk of it, duplicate that, put it at 100%, and then stretch it, warp it. This kind of icy, cold texture overlay. And move it where I think it would be most helpful to separate, in this case, the bottom of the water tower. And then erase away from it. With a big soft eraser. 
all this this kind of atmosphere you build and add into your scene can really help sell your creature being there. I think of all the special effects movies where it shows the robot or the monster in a rainstorm. It, it does it with dark lighting. It does it with a lot of atmosphere, with a lot of mist. It helps the things that are photographed and the things that are computer generated all blend a little bit better together. And it will only feel like it's too much once you've actually have too much. <laughs> so I added all of these. And then as I start kind of refining it, they don't seem like so much. <laughs> but in some areas, I still want it to be a little crisper. All right, so these are ways we can improve overall. Okay, so texture overlay color. Now we get to the lighting. So what is the light source of your landscape? I have kind of a setting sun behind my creature. Remember, my creature layers are red. They're easy to find. So I have that, that kind of dusk, stormy sun. So my creature is going to be backlit, which means the rims of my creature are going to be brighter than the interior. Now. This is a trick that will help you burn and dodge not just your creature, but also the background, so the shadow that it casts, without affecting any of your pixel layers. And this is what you do. So I'm going to do this on top of my, let's see, on top of my Talon layer. Right here, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to fill it, edit fill with 50% gray. It should block out almost everything, right? It should block out my creature and then everything behind my creature. 50% gray. And it shows me kind of what these texture overlays are doing. This one's a little too strong. I'm going to soften that with Gaussian Blur. Maybe soften it one more time. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Though I want it to be more like ice crystals, maybe I'll, yeah, yeah maybe not soften it. All right, never mind. So I have this. This layer is going to be what we call a gradient and or a dodge burn um, overlay layer. So I go to normal and I change the normal blending style to overlay, which makes it so it's not even there. But if I burn it, it will burn. If I dodge it, it will dodge. Anything other than 50% will show. And it will map to whatever's behind. So let me show you the core shadow I want for my creature. You always want to do this not on your creature layer because we tend to overdo it. I'm going to burn at an exposure of about 13 at the midtones with a big soft brush. And I'm just going to start burning on that overlay layer. In fact, we can label it. And it's called that because it's set to the overlay style and I can mark it with yellow. And I'm going to burn in a core shadow. You know, so that the hollows of the wings are going to get a lot darker. The interior parts of my creature are going to get darker. So it feels more backlit. The core of the tail. The tips darker but here's what's really nice not only is it going to dodge and burn my creature it's going to dodge and burn the shadow underneath and if I need a sharp shadow I can use my lasso and draw that shadow kind of the shape of it like that
and then I can just burn within that shape. And that will give me, even with a soft burn um, tool, it will give me a sharp edge on that shadow. And if it gets too colorful as you burn it, you can use the sponge tool to desaturate. But you'll have to go to the actual layer for that. So let's look at what that overlay layer is doing if I set it to normal mode. So it's adding all of these, these darks. I've only burned on it so far. Now if I set it back to overlay, you'll see what effect that has on my scene and whether that helps or not. That's just the burning. I think I can do more burning here. And sometimes I might even need to burn highlights a little bit, like in the middle of the wing here. OK. Now I can also use it for dodging. Or I can do an additional overlay layer. So let me just do it as an additional. So I'm going to call this the burn overlay layer. And then above it, I'm going to make a new, another new layer. I'm going to fill it with middle gray. Set it to overlay. Mark it as yellow. Label it my dodge overlay layer. And now I use the dodge tool to brighten. Start with the midtones at a low. A low exposure rate. And now I'm going to lighten on the outside edge because my creature is backlit. So what is that doing? If I set it to normal, you will see it's brightening. If I turn off all these texture overlays that are in front of my creature, you'll see. So that is what the dodge overlay layer is doing. When I set it to overlay, it shows on my composite. Get the back of the tail. Okay, this is what my burn overlay layer is doing. Right. This is the two of them together. So you have dodge and burn together in one. And that shows all of the changes I'm making to my original creature in order to fit it in. Okay, what if I want to pose my creature? I think those shadows are really helping. So let me set them on overlay mode. Let me set dodge on overlay mode, good. But what if I wanna change or, or lessen them? So because they're on separate layers, I can take their opacity up and down. And I always tend to overdo it. You see how those shadows go to black? I don't want them to go to black. I wanna push them so that they're there but not getting rid of information. And with the dodge, you use the slider and decide how much of that you want. How much of that brightness is helpful. Okay, now this is the really fun part. And you can do dodge overlay after this as well. But if you want to change the pose of your creature, go to your creature layer. I'll do it on a copy because I'm not sure I do want to change the pose of mine. So I'll make a duplicate. And then you go to Edit Puppet Warp. So we've used Warp before. Warp gave you a nine grid mesh frame. Puppet Warp takes your creature and gives it a polygon mesh. On that polygon mesh, I'm just going to change the position of the feet a little bit. Or actually, of the, let me show you the wings. So let me zoom out. You can set your anchor points. So I'm going to set anchors at the feet. You just click and it pins them. Set anchors on the spine and, and set anchors at the elbows of the wings. And now I can flap the wings. 